A place of worship and rich Buddhist history, Bodh Gaya is a city located in the Gaya district of Bahir in eastern India. Bodh Gaya is primarily known for the Buddha's achievement of enlightenment. Bodh Gaya is currently one of the most religiously important sites for Buddhism, and tens of thousands of people make pilgrimages there every year. The history of Bodh Gaya prior to the Buddha is relatively unknown. Excavations of the area have shown that people have lived in Bodh Gaya for more than 4,500 years. An early ruler of Bodh Gaya was Sisunaga, the leader of the Sisunaga dynasty, which gained control around 600 BC. Another famous ruler of Bodh Gaya was Bimbisara, who ruled around 519 BC. Bimbisara controlled Bodh Gaya during the time in which Siddhartha Gautama came and achieved enlightenment. A great deal more about the history of Bodh Gaya during the time of the Buddha has been preserved. After leaving his wealth and family in 534 BC, Siddhartha Gautama studied under different ascetics, such as Arada Kalama and Udraka Ramaputra. He learned what he could from them, but eventually left in search of Nirvana. For some time, Gautama lived with five ascetics near the Naranjana River near Bodh Gaya. With these ascetics, he practiced severe mortification and emaciation. Gautama eventually left the ascetics, realizing that their way of life would not lead to nirvana. After leaving the ascetics, Gautama sat underneath a sacred tree and was offered a meal by a woman named Sujata. When the ascetics, with whom he had formerly studied, saw him eating, they laughed at him in his supposed lack of willpower. Gautama then moved to sit under a new tree, the Bodhi tree, and vowed to remain there until he had attained enlightenment. During the time he spent under the Bodhi tree, Gautama was tempted by Mara, the goddess of desire and death. Mara first called up her armies against Gautama, but they could not defeat him. Then, Mara's daughters, discontent, delight, and craving, attempted to seduce Gautama, but also failed. Through many days of meditation, Gautama finally achieved nirvana. At the moment he attained nirvana, every being in the world was peaceful, and Gautama became the Buddha. The Buddha stayed meditating under the Bodhi tree for another seven days following his enlightenment. After his awakening, the Buddha spent seven weeks in Bodh Gaya. While there, he traveled to seven different sites, which came to be known as the Sata Mahatana. The Buddha then left Bodh Gaya for a period of time. He returned, and during his stay, converted the Kasapa brothers and their followers. This was the last time the Buddha would visit Bodh Gaya. Before his death, the Buddha recommended that his followers visit the four places that were important in his life, Lumbini, Bodh Gaya, Isipatana, and Kushinara. The Buddha said, Ananda, there are four places the sight of which will arouse strong emotion in those with faith. Which four? Here, the Tathagata was born. This is the first place. Here, the Tathagata attained enlightenment. This is the second place. Here, the Tathagata set in motion the wheel of the Dharma. This is the third place. Here the Tathagata attained final nirvana without remainder. This is the fourth place. This proclamation paved the way for future pilgrimages to Bodh Gaya. Though Bodh Gaya played an important role in the Buddha's life, it did not become a religious center for quite a while due to power struggles. For some time, Bodh Gaya was ruled by Ajatshatru, who was Bimbisara's son. Ajatshatru murdered his father in order to gain control. After the rule of Ajatshatru, the Nanda dynasty came to power for a short period of time. After these rulers came one of the most famous and important rulers in the history of Bodh Gaya, Emperor Ashoka Maura. Emperor Ashoka converted to Buddhism around 262 BC. After his conversion, Emperor Ashoka made a pilgrimage to Bodh Gaya. Ashoka was awed by the religious importance of the city. During his rule, he founded the original Mahabodhi temple. He also established a monastery and created a shrine around a stone representation of the Vajrasana, or Seat of Enlightenment. It is also believed that Ashoka had a branch of the holy Bodhi tree sent to Sri Lanka. After the rule of Emperor Ashoka, Bodh Gaya changed hands countless times. Around 184 BC, Pushpamitra killed the last of the Maurun rulers and took the throne. Then the area came under new control in 150 AD with the Kushans. Hindu control over Bodh Gaya began in the 4th century with the Guptas under the leadership of Samudra Gupta. Many things changed in the city during the 13th century when the Turks gained control over Bodh Gaya, destroying a great deal of the city. Rule over Bodh Gaya changed numerous times during the next few centuries until the city came under British control in 1764. The British exercised this control until India won its freedom in 1947. 
Pilgrimages to Bodh Gaya have been an important part of Buddhist culture since the Buddha mentioned it on his deathbed. Many different routes have been taken by pilgrims throughout the centuries. One such route in the north ran parallel to the Himalayan foothills. Another was a central path which followed the Gange. Another popular route was one in the south which followed the Yamuna. There have been many famous pilgrimages to Bodh Gaya throughout the ages. Emperor Ashoka made one of the most famous pilgrimages to Bodh Gaya around 250 BC. Other pilgrims, such as Fa Yan, who came from China in 399 AD, and Yan Sung, who traveled to Bodh Gaya in 629 AD, helped to record a great deal of the history of Bodh Gaya in their travel journals. Pilgrimages also helped form new types of literature. One new type was Matipatikas, which were small prayer books bought by Sri Lankan monks on pilgrimages. Another new form was Mahatya Gai books, which showed pilgrims the way to Bodh Gaya. Not only did pilgrimages help to record Bodh Gaya's history and bring new forms of literature, but they also helped to shape the city. Numerous temples and shrines were built by travelers, and the city currently has monasteries with Buddhists from Sri Lanka, Tibet, Bhutan, and Japan. Pilgrimages to Bodh Gaya have only become more popular with the passing of time, and today tens of thousands of people annually make the pilgrimage from all over the world. One of the main reasons that people make the journey to Bodh Gaya is because of the multitude of religious sites. One of the most important places for Buddhists to visit is the Mahabodhi Temple. It is also known as the Bodh Gaya Stupa and the Mahabodhi Vihara. The Mahabodhi Temple is believed to have been founded by Emperor Ashoka 250 years after the Buddha's enlightenment. Records depict it as a two-story structure with a roof over the Bodhi tree. Also inside was the Vajrasana, or the Seat of Enlightenment. Many changes, such as the additions built by the Pali kings of Bengal, have been made to the temple since its creation. The rule of the Turks and many centuries following devastated the Mahabodhi temple. It wasn't until British rule that the temple was renovated. In 1861, Alexander Cunningham sent word back to Britain of the horrendous state of the temple. Though word was sent in 1861, it wasn't until 1880 that any work began. J.D. Beglar began the work based on models of the original Mahabodhi temple. During the renovation, there was a great deal of controversy over how much was changed about the standing temple. Many people felt that the work being done was actually destroying the temple as opposed to helping it. Just like the city of Bodh Gaya, the Mahabodhi temple has changed hands many times, often between Buddhist and Hindu believers. In the 18th century, a monk named Gosan Gamandi Giri claimed the Mahabodhi temple for himself and for his followers. Later, during the 19th century, the temple was claimed by Anagarika Dharmapala, a pilgrim from Sri Lanka. Dharmapala wanted the Buddhists to again have control of the Mahabodhi temple. A legal battle began and in 1906, Dharmapala was defeated in his quest for ownership. He continued to fight until 1949 when the Bodh Gaya Temple Act was passed. This act placed ownership of the temple in the hands of four Buddhists and four Hindus. Mixtures of styles and architecture from different time periods have shaped the existing temple. Today the temple is built of brick and limestone and is topped by a stupa, or dome-shaped shrine. Inside the temple is a shrine with a Shakyamuni Buddha statue, which depicts the Buddha touching the earth after his awakening. Around the temple runs a large stone railing. The older portions of the railing were created from sandstone, and the newer portions were created from granite. At the main entrance of the temple, there are niches with statues of the Buddha dating back to the 6th century. Another important Buddhist pilgrimage site is the Mahabodhi image. This is a statue which can be found inside the Mahabodhi temple. Many Buddhists believe that the statue is the exact likeness of the Buddha. The story surrounding the statue states that when the Mahabodhi temple was finished, there was a search for a statue of the Buddha to put inside. The search for the perfect statue yielded nothing, since all of the statues viewed were deemed inaccurate in their depiction of the Buddha. After some time, a man came forth who claimed that he could complete the statue. He was locked inside the temple sanctum with some clay and a lamb for six months. With only four days left until the six months were over, the people became too impatient and opened the door early. Inside was the statue, but with a small portion unfinished and no sculpture to be found. Years later, a monk slept in the sanctum with the statue. He dreamed that Amayitreya had come and told him that he was the original sculpture. Amayitreya is the Bodhisattva who would appear as the Buddha 5,000 years after the death of Gautama. From this it is believed that the original sculpture was a form of the Buddha. The current statue inside the Mahabodhi temple was found in the ruins by the British during the renovations. However, it is not the original. 
which was rumored to have been destroyed by the Muslims when they invaded years ago. Of all Buddhist holy places, the Bodhi tree may be the most important. It is the site of the Buddha's awakening. The tree which is currently in Bodh Gaya is not the original tree under which the Buddha attained enlightenment, but it is thought to be a relative of the original. There are many stories surrounding the Bodhi tree, one being that the original tree was destroyed by Emperor Ashoka's wife. The story follows that she became jealous of the tree after her husband spent too much time contemplating under it. In her rage, she cut down the Bodhi tree. One shoot was saved and sent by Ashoka, as previously stated, to Sri Lanka with his daughter as a peace offering in an attempt to set up a Buddhist monastery there. The story also